Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without a subscription. Subscribe if you like my videos. Have a great vacation. My 14. Dad had a health scare which turned out to be fine. He made a will. He sat us down and talked about it to me, his wife, and her children. They are both getting a stake in his business, and as there are three of them, they end up as a majority. As two of them are older, they will get to be part of it immediately. He said my stepmother also counts as a shareholder. Then he stated money-wise, his wife is getting 50%, which she intends on giving 30% to her children. On top of that, those children get 10%, the same as me and my sister. He stated our parents had set up a trust fund for my sister, and our grandmother had given her money upon her death before I was born. Most sentimental stuff was going to his wife and my sister. Grandmother stuff. And as I didn't know her, this is why. Therefore, I'm getting the least amount of money, and have no say in the business when he retires as the step family have majority control. I told him to give my inheritance to his new family. It confirms I am the afterthought. I know it's his money, but it hurts. Everyone else was ecstatic. Their mother played the game well. Having affairs pays off. Am I in the right to be upset and reject this insulting inheritance? Edit. I told all of them during this family meeting. He said he would ask again when I was 16 if I wanted it. He doesn't have to give you anything, and he isn't even dead yet. If you feel the same way when he is dead, give it to charity. Fighting about it while he's still alive is gross. You're the a-hole. His money, his decision. You don't get much say in what he does with it as he is writing his will. Had this been spending money, it's a different story. All rejecting it does is burn that bridge even more, and at the end of the day, make your life more difficult. Are you sure this is the hill you want to die on? Not the a-hole. He can do whatever he wants with his money. In a situation where he leaves you with far less than anyone else, you're going to be hurt. The benefit for you is Dad has told you that you need to learn to be independent. You'll have to work hard and learn so you can take care of yourself. Everyone else can mooch off him and blow through his money. But you'll be able to go live your own life without worrying about the family business or taking care of family interests. You could go away for university, get a job that interests you more, live anywhere. My mother has been an entitled bee to my entire family since we were kids. She has done so much to us, it is hard to even know where to start. Such as putting bills into our names before we were even 16, ducking up all of our credit, demanding money from us all the time. Most recently, demanding money from me prior to my wedding last year for her to have a vehicle, or else she wouldn't allow my father, true, or brother, false, as he says he could have found a way there himself, to come claiming that my brothers have stolen things from them, having my father steal from us and forge my name on a paycheck so they can get money, claiming my eight-year-old nephew, at the time, beat her and my dad, and so on. My mom's always had a knack for being able to manipulate me by using my dad's well-being against me, saying he won't have pain meds so she can get money, saying he will have to walk for miles with his painful spinal injuries, etc., by comparing me to my brothers, claiming they won't help her, and crying to me, etc. Most recently, however, and the final straw for me, was that last year, my wife's family, generously, offered to have her use their family cottage for a week, during which time my parents ended up royally pissing off the neighbors by not cleaning up their dog crap, taking out a boat only for my dad to pass out on one of their docks, and having the boat slam into it, according to the neighbors, trying to start a fire under the cottage's porch, being rude and obnoxious, etc., well, after that, my wife's grandmother, who owns the cottage, told them they could only go up to the cottage if someone in their family went with them, me and my wife, or someone else. They said fine, but then that grandmother died last year, and my wife's mother and uncle inherited it. So, in the middle of spring, my mom tried to find out if they can go up for a week, and we tell her that we can't take time off for a while to go up with her. She turned around and said that she thought that we didn't need to go up with them anymore, as the grandmother was dead. Anyways, after telling them that's not how that works, the rules are still in place, she said okay and eventually hung up. Skip forward a few weeks, and she calls again asking if we could plan a weekend where we could all go up together, and me and my wife say sure, we just have to work it out with our jobs and with my wife's parents. They thought that we could just go up any time that we were all free though, 
because they asked why we had to ask her parents. Again, not my wife's or my property. In addition, by the end of the conversation, it was clear that she also thought that she could bend the rules previously mentioned by having us up there for the start of the trip and finish off a week with just them there. I confronted her on this, and she said, well, we would feel like we were being babysat if you guys had to come with us the entire time. At this point, I'm just thinking, B, you would be being babysat by us. That's the point. You've proven to my wife's family that you all need to be under supervision there, and are lucky that they will allow you back at all. After she hangs up, though, I think it's been resolved, until a couple days later when she texts me asking for my wife's mother's number so she can talk about the restrictions and such, which upset my wife because she was already being rude to us about everything, and so my wife did not want to give my mother her parents' phone number for her to harass them, nor should she have to. So she texted back saying that she wasn't allowed to give it out. Shortly after, we went to the movies, only for my mother to send me a text saying, we can't get Hannah's mom's number. What the duck have you been saying to them about us? My wife, trying not to cause more conflict, then sent them a message saying she would have her mother call them to talk. Well, this further devolved that night into us saying, duck all the niceties, as my mother started texting me replies like, we should have never had kids, and I should have thrown myself down the stairs when I was pregnant with you. So, after the accusatory message saying, what the duck are we telling my wife's family about them, I haven't responded at all, and have blocked their number. My wife stopped talking to them after the final message of her saying she would have her mom call mine. It amazes me when I and others have to deal with family members taking advantage of their relationship to family members to be able to get them to do something, and even more when they use their relationship to that family member to manipulate a third party like one of their friends, or in this case, a kind of fourth party like my wife's mother. I mean, who the duck thinks they are entitled to their children's wife's family's property? I shouldn't be as surprised as I am though. After all, she used to hit my friends up for money and rides in high school and college. I will say though that things have been a lot less stressful since my mother has been out of the picture for us, and things between my brother's families and I have never been better. Sucks for her though, as I was the last one out of her four sons that wanted anything to do with them. I'm surprised you put up with it for as long as you did. You're a much better person than I. I'm shocked you still have a relationship with your parents. Your father is just as bad as your mother, enabling her and supporting her in her awful behavior towards you and your family. If my parents were like yours, I'd move, change my numbers, and block them everywhere. You must be a truly forgiving and kind person to put up with that. My fiancé and I just cut people out of our lives. We both have massive families, and people learned very quickly that after being blocked on all communication methods, you treat us with respect. We burned many, many bridges, but thankfully our friend and family networks were large enough to take the dump. Simplified my family friend network core group of I come from a South Asian background. In my culture, families tend to live in multi-generational homes with their siblings, which is nice, but can also create a sense of entitlement to other people's things. My immediate family, parents and brother, grew up in the U.S. since I was in first grade. Majority of my relatives lived in our home country until a few years ago when they moved to where my family and I are. I own a two-family home that was purchased over eight years ago. The home was purchased well before my aunts and uncles moved to the States, and they in no way helped with the purchase. For some reason, they thought when they moved to the US, they would be able to live in my home. I said no for various reasons, not limited to seeing how they did not take care of their own home back in our home country. No guarantee they would actually pay rent, and did not want to mix family with this kind of thing. Currently, one of my aunts and her family are looking to buy a home. They have gotten rejected a couple of times due to low offers, so are now asking relatives to give them cash to increase their offers. Had dinner at my parents with one of my aunts and some members of her family. At dinner, my aunt asked me if I could help. I told them I cannot. We have a wedding to pay for and our own goal of purchasing a new home in a few years. Aunt responded by saying, you really don't have any extra money? Doesn't your significant other have inheritance that she could use to help us out? You didn't let us live in your home, and we had to rent out elsewhere, so you should at least help us out here. To that I answered, just because we have money saved up does not mean we want to give you $20,000. The money we have saved up is for our own goals and emergencies. As far as my significant other's inheritance, 
That really isn't your business, since it's not really even my business. That's significant other's inheritance, and not an emergency fund for people to use. For context, the only reason why my aunt knows about my significant other's inheritance is because my significant other mentioned it to my mom once when talking about her grandparents, who the inheritance is from. She never mentioned an amount. My mom must have mentioned it to relatives. Not the best idea for my mom to do. None of them even know the actual amount of the inheritance. Funniest part about all of this is that I don't even like these relatives. Only reason why I keep in touch or help out with other things, job applications, help with schooling, taking cousins to the movies, is because my mom asked me to just see them once in a while and because I do care about my cousins who shouldn't be blamed for their parents' crappiness. If they were decent people, we would try to help. However, they are generally selfish and entitled. If we offered a lower amount than requested, they would just act pissy about it. Then you are right to offer them nothing. Tell them significant other's inheritance was only $1,500 and they will stop drooling over it. If they got rejected for low offers, then they need to start shopping in their true budget. Not your problem at all. My, 36, stepsister, 25, Kaida, was a burnout. It was hard on all of us to deal with, and she did treat us horribly. Dad, technically my stepdad, if it matters, tried really hard to help her, but she would just lie and steal. It got to the worst point when she stole from dad while he was in the hospital, and mom disowned her. After he passed, Kaida finally realized that she had an issue and needed to leave Dee and the jerk that took advantage of her. We had always been close, and when Kaida came to me, I helped her. It's been an extremely difficult five years, but she's now three years sober. Kaida's made so much progress, and I'm really proud of her. She's even trying to pay us back for everything she's stolen. I understand that she hurt our family a lot, and they don't have to forgive her. Even after all her efforts to get sober and pay her back, Mom won't forgive Kaida. She worked hard and paid most of the debt off. She's tried to apologize. I've tried to stay out of it, but this Mother's Day got too much. Kaida came over to drop off a Mother's Day gift. She didn't say anything other than Happy Mother's Day. She didn't try to come in or beg forgiveness. She didn't even mean to be seen when she dropped it off. But Mum was horrible and basically told her she doesn't have a daughter and doesn't want anything unless it's the money and just threw the gift away. I tried to stay out of it, but when I got home, Kaida was a wreck. She's tried so hard and come so far. It's just not right for Mum to be so cold. Like, she doesn't have to forgive her, but have some compassion for your daughter. I ended up trying to talk to Mum about it, but it went terribly. She basically told me to stop coddling her, and I got mad. We fought pretty bad. I honestly think it's disgusting, especially when she's been sober for so long now. She shouldn't be punished for eternity, especially not in that disgusting way. I did tell her dad would be ashamed, and that the least she can do is accept a ducking Mother's Day gift. No one is saying to take a ducking holiday with her. Mom thinks I'm just babying her and that I'll end up regretting it. My other siblings think I'm a major a-hole and that I'm being a horrible son. Apparently, I should be on her side instead of that burnout B. That even dad wouldn't forgive what she did. I think they're being unfair and unreasonable. They don't have to forgive, but she doesn't need to treat her that way. It's just disgusting. She's still human. She's still family. It's been five years. She's nothing like she used to be. I believe I'm right, but I don't mean to hurt mom and definitely don't intend to hurt dad's memory. You're the a-hole. If your mother isn't ready to forgive Kaida, why would she even come over? Coming over to someone's home uninvited and unwelcome is a recipe for disaster. If you want the relationship to be repaired, saying your father would be ashamed of her isn't the way. It's just causing more friction. You should stay out of it and just continue to support your sister's sobriety. You don't get to decide other people's relationships. Your stepsister screwed over a lot of people, and it was not okay. It will never be okay. Your mom may take longer than you to actually accept her back into her life, if she even decides to. That's her decision. You and Kaida need to stop trying to get your mom to have a relationship with Kaida. Kaida needs to focus on her own recovery and continue to grow without her stepmom. You need to stop trying to act like you know what your stepdad would do, or what others should do or not do. You're the a-hole. Good for your stepsister for being sober for three years, but it will never erase the crappy things she did when she was using. 
And I'm guessing you only know half the crap she did. I'll, 48 male, start off by saying my son Peter, 25, has a big heart. He always has. It's gotten him into trouble quite a few times. A little over a year ago, he met June, 23. She was 12 weeks pregnant at the time. Father, no way in sight. Peter and June moved really fast. She was living with him just four months later. He told me that he was going to help her with the baby, which I was on the fence about as they had just met, but also figured it's not my business and it's honorable of him to want to help his girlfriend with her baby. June had a baby girl, Cadence, six months ago. Peter has been heavily involved in her life. Recently, he proposed to June. We went to their place to celebrate the big news. That's when my wife asked if Peter had plans to adopt Cadence. June and Peter avoided the subject, and my wife let it drop, figuring it may be tricky, especially if Cadence's bio dad didn't want to relinquish rights. Later on, after Cadence was put to bed, June and Peter admitted that he wouldn't have to adopt Cadence, as he's on the birth certificate. I asked, wasn't that fraud? He said after speaking to a lawyer, even if it made it to court, there's no legal repercussions. Their reasoning for doing this is Peter will have equal say in Cadence's life. If for whatever reason they broke up, he'd get custody. I instantly thought, and he'd be on the hook for child support, but I stayed quiet. My wife asked if they planned on telling Cadence the truth, and they said yes, it won't be a secret. The bio dad is also aware and doesn't care as he has no desire to be a dad. I don't think that June is trying to get money out of him. She actually comes from a wealthier family and works for her dad's company. I genuinely believe they just love each other, but to me, this is a recipe for disaster. I tried to let it go. Then, Peter stopped by the house for something, and we got to talking about Cadence. Peter called her his daughter, and I said I'm glad he loves her, but him signing the birth certificate was a huge mistake. I pointed out all the things that could go wrong. He said he doesn't care, and wants to do right by his girls. He called me unsupportive, and told me to either get on board, or I won't get to be in my granddaughter's life. I love my granddaughter. Blood doesn't matter, she's family. But I still think this is a mistake. Am I the a-hole for voicing that? You're the a-hole. So you're okay with him adopting her, thus having the birth certificate changed then, but not from the jump when he's been in her life from pre-birth. None of that makes sense. He's going to be still on the hook for child support if he adopts her. You need to realize this is his family, not some money-making scheme. No a-holes. He's known this woman for a year, and he's taken responsibility for her child, which isn't biologically his. You're right. It's a huge decision, and one which will have massive consequences in his life, especially if his relationship with June were to end. I don't think you're an a-hole for voicing your concerns. It's what a parent should do. Additionally, it doesn't make him an a-hole to say, I've already thought about this a lot and I don't share your concerns. But now that you've said your piece and he's heard you, you need to drop it. You'll be the a-hole if you don't get on board. Your son is an adult. He's made an adult decision. If there are consequences, he will deal with them. And he doesn't need you nagging him about negative hypotheticals as he's trying to start his family. It will only drive a wedge between you and him. Not the a-hole. They barely know each other and got married really quick. This is an objectively stupid thing to do.